Okay, we're back. We're live. Coronaville, what's next? This is Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. We have uh, Stephanie Dalton. We have Tim Apicella, and we have Winston Welsh. Welcome, everybody, to the show. All right, our show today is called Trump Has Made Our Trusted CDC Into a Politicized Train Wreck. Okay, and indeed, in the past 24 hours, CDC has become an incredible train wreck. Um, over its uh, uh, strange reversal of position on whether there should be testing. So, Tim, why don't you begin? What did the CDC say? Um, why did it say this? And uh, what was Trump's involvement in it? And how is the medical community responding? Um, okay, thank you, Jay. Uh, three points. Yesterday on their website, basically the CDC said... Um, if you've been exposed to a uh, positive case of a COVID-19, you do not necessarily have to get a test unless you're showing symptoms. Now, that's a, that's a grand departure from, yeah, you need to get a test because you could be asymptomatic, asymptomatic and be carrying the virus. So the, the recommendation prior to yesterday was get a test under any circumstance if you've been exposed to someone with COVID-19. Uh, today, actually, the director, Robert Redfield, has reversed his position. He has now said close controls, hang on here, close co contacts of confirmed COVID-19 patients, you may consider testing. So the website hasn't changed, but Redfield, in his words, has. Um, clearly, this- What does has, that mean? You may he's consider- walking back, He's walking back his statement. Clearly, it's, he's been exposed that he has received undue pressure from Donald Trump's administration or from Donald Trump directly that he needs to slow down the testing. As Donald Trump said a month ago, I told my people to slow down the testing because more tests means more cases. Donald Trump doesn't want more cases because that's not good for his image and good for his reelection efforts. Okay, Winston, can you relate that to the uh, the truthfulness of what Donald Trump says to the American public? Is this a trick question? I I, uh, I would say that um, you know, as I've been saying for quite a while, we're, we can't really we're looking toward the federal government for answers has not really been the the solution here, and I I have been saying we need to look at our local authorities, our state and our federal authorities, companies. However, in Hawaii, I think more important for me because the federal government's information is, uh, you know, now become really suspect. And and uh, what happened to the daily briefings? What happened to the Trump, uh, uh, Pence, uh, Mike Pence task force, or even Jared? I mean, it wasn't as it's all nonsense. But here in the state is much more important for me when we found out today that our our state auditor can't even got, get answers to questions on why we don't have contract. Uh, contact tracing here and that the federales have come in here i mean when we have the surgeon general here in hawaii saying you guys look like you need some help that's actually quite disturbing and uh and then of course you know they, they are giving tests out but and you uh we'll probably get to it later about the the, the abbott labs uh, five minute test but that's where we're going so every time you go into walmart or kmart or Costco, you're just going to get a swab. It'll be a 30 second test. When you get a green light, you go forward. Um, that's where we're moving to. But I'm profoundly disappointed in our state where we had zero cases a few months ago because that's where it really lives. So I'm happy that the city is trying to step up here um, and do the right thing. And, uh, you know, again, I guess if the federal government fails you and the state government fails you, we got the city as a backup. So hopefully this federal and the state will pick up some of the slack here somehow. But um, yeah, it's fatiguing. Well, you know, uh, one thing is if you don't get information or if you get confused, you are less likely to follow the rules. You're less likely to wear the mask. You're less likely to do social distancing. And indeed, there's a lot of people in Hawaii who gave up the rules. And I think part of that is because they've been either confused or they feel that the information they're getting from David E. Gay and the Department of Health is not true. Um, what do you think about that, Stephanie? Is that, is that your view? I, I so agree with you. 
I do. I, I mean, I had been touting to all my friends from the mainland about how we are um, a state full of people who know how to follow directions. And that that's why we were doing so good is that we're very disciplined and we follow our leaders. And so that leads me to the leadership issue and, and confusion that may be emanating from them, from those who lead. So um, the, other, the other item that I'm concerned about that came out yesterday, and maybe it's just me, I missed it, but I kind of, I try to track the numbers. And um, I was astounded. Well, I guess it's, they said it today too. I guess it was from the testing yesterday that we have a positive test rate of 11% and that we are the highest in the nation on that. That is shocking to go from where we were, as you described, to 11% um, highest testing, positive testing rate in the states. So well, well, that, probably, that probably is below the reality. It's probably more than that. It could probably, and, and if we did tracing, it would be more than that. If we had real tracing, if the, the health department had gotten their act together, that is also very disturbing. That, you know, that, we had just uh, last hour, we had a show with Tom Yamachika, who has studied this and written about it, um, about what, you know, what happened with the, um, he called it the raid on the Department of Health, where a bunch of legislators went over there uh, to look for the tracers and didn't found half a dozen tracers when we were supposed to have 400 of them. I mean, it's a, it's a huge failure. It's a failure in fact, it's a failure in spending, uh, and it's a failure in transparency. Well, transparency is a light word for that. It's a failure in being honest with, with the people. And so if they're honest with us, we're likely to make better moves. We're likely to make better decisions, and we're likely to follow the rules. It's really sad what happened. And, and you know, those sort of, when you find the government agencies are not telling you the truth, it's not that you change your mind about that the next day. You carry that and you never believe them again, or at least not for a long time, or at least not for that certain you know, administration. Anyway, uh, you know, we had a reference uh, uh, a little while ago, Tim, um, to the $5, five minute, five million unit uh, coming October test from Abbott Laboratories. You familiar with that? Can you talk about it? Um, not totally familiar with it. I know that uh, Abbott's been working on it and um, I think it's going to help greatly uh, once it's out there in the marketplace. I know that here locally um, they're, they're proposing 70,000 tests for free that um, will you'll have the results in one 24 hour period or at maximum 48 hour period. Again, whether it's a five minute test or a one day test um, that allows the opportunity for contact tracing to take place. I think what happens is when these tests get backed up and they're, you know, you're waiting five days or more days than five, um, contact tracing is, is near impossible because just too much time has elapsed. You can't, you can't work your way backward to see who's all been in contact with that particular patient. Um, so a five minute $5 test is, is wonderful news. Well, we, we talked to a guy uh, in the University of Michigan, um, it must be 45 days ago, who was working on a five minute test. Um, and he said he'd, he'd done it and it was, um, you know, high credibility test, um, but the FDA was sitting on it and he couldn't get the FDA to approve it. And then three weeks ago, um, we talked to Pat uh, Sullivan, who is the CEO of a local company, Oceanit, and he said he had a five minute test um, and it was in the neighborhood of five dollars too. Um, and likewise, he had submitted it to the FDA and they were sitting on it. You know, and, and, and until, you know, the, the last couple of days when we see that um, all these agencies, especially health agencies like FDA, CDC, NIH, are subject to uh, Donald Trump's uh, control and manipulation, I would have assumed it was just bureaucracy. Now I'm not so sure, because if you put this kind of stuff together, you get a president who doesn't want testing, okay, and and... and and then you get the, the agencies that work for him. And if you talk to the, you know, the, the chiefs of these agencies, you, it doesn't take long to figure out who they respond to. Um, slow, slowing down on, on the approvals. You know, I don't know what the big deal is with a test. It's not like a therapeutic or a vaccine where it can kill you. The only question with the test is whether it gives you an accurate result. But these are already shown to be accurate results, the two of them I mentioned. And Abbott Laboratories at 97%. Um, 
I don't know why we don't have it already. Do you know more about this, Winston? I don't, and uh, it's troubling what you what you just referenced. Is that again? This is part and parcel of, of this entire administration is to undermine credibility in our federal agencies and it doesn't matter which one where you look at it's it's just the, the wholesale destruction and dismantling of public trust in our institutions whether it's the post office or the uh anything just look look around at the and so what happens then is then the public doesn't know what to do it doesn't trust the information coming out it doesn't help that the state is is also on the bandwagon of not giving information uh you know like the, the prison you work at the prison, you want to know, what are my working conditions like? They won't give that information. Um, you know, fundamentally, what this administration has unleashed is, a, is an epidemic of, of um, irresponsibility and uh, I want to say sociopathism, but it's also just not accepting responsibility for giving correct, true information to the public. And even those that do, that are trying, they're they are, are running into um, suspicion and mistrust by the public because of how this whole administration has been run. So as far as is this test working at 97%, is that Abbott that's saying that? Is that the FDA that's saying that? I, I want to trust Abbott. Abbott. Abbott is saying that. I want to trust Abbott and I'm going to, I'm going to go in. Uh, but the thing is, is if you get it, so you get a, a COVID test. If we're at 11% now, let's just do the simple map. Uh, we've got a million people on this island so we got 110,000 who we can basically just multiply by by 10 uh from what i've read from california we've got about a tenth of the population here currently having covid what does that mean what if you do test positive we're supposed to be staying at home anyway we're supposed to be isolating and socially distancing so i don't know exactly what that will mean except to say don't even go out for groceries have them delivered that's all I can pretty much figure out. Um, I mean, if you start having breathing difficulties or chest pains, you can call 911 anyway. So the, the utility of the test right now, um, I, I know we should, as it starts to become ubiquitous to every store we enter or every day, we just take a test before you send your kids to school. That will start having a great deal of utility when we're combined with uh, contract tracing. So we can just say, okay, you know, Mary tested positive this morning. We're quarantining her for two weeks. It's going to rely on on goodwill of citizens, but it's also going to rely on just you know you want to go into Walmart, you've got to take the test. Or well, you know, the, the the problem is if if Mary is about to go to school and you give her the five minute Abbott test, which won't be available till October at best, okay, um, then what do you do? Uh, okay, she should be traced. She should be traced because. Uh, contrary to what the what the CDC said yesterday, um, asymptomatic is is spreads virus, and, and then something like fifty percent of all the cases that come up are 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 infected from asymptomatic patient victims. Um, so it's, it's quite remarkable. So you got to trace. You got to find out who those people are. You got to look at every one of them. We're not doing that in Hawaii. We're not even close. We're a hundred miles away from that. And the only way it's we're going to, go ahead. Oh, no, it's interesting. The, the city's stepping up here where the state has failed. This is not something I would have seen from the city administration, but you know what? Uh, I guess we got tired of being quarantined and singled out where it's the other islands seem to be doing okay and they banned us from even going there. Um, there's a reason for this. Now the 5 million tests that Abbott's going to come out with, think about this. We got 500 million in this in this country, that's 1% of the population gets a COVID test. Essentially, this needs to be mass produced. No, it was, it was, I think it was 50 million. If I said 5 million, I million. And you got, you know, 10, it, it, we've got to really roll these things out in a sustained way. But in the meantime, maybe they do uh, some sort of targeted testing for people that are, and roll it out from there. There there's, has to be a playbook on this that Obama left. Um, well, how do you, do you, do you remember Apple and Google were collaborating in an app that would trace. I, I think we've talked about this before. This is like three, four months ago. Um, and the idea was that if somebody was in the database in the cloud as, um, you know, as, a, as a COVID patient, the app would know if you were near this person. It's a physical distancing from your phone to that person's phone. 
um, and it stopped. It stopped because I think it was the federal government, maybe the FDA said, no, 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 it's a violation of privacy, which in an emergency is really not persuasive to me. You don't have to reveal the name. All you have to do is say that somebody near you, you know, and let, and let the app deal with him or her. So anyway, I mean, we don't have, you know, I saw some, you know who Ryan Ozawa is? Ryan Ozawa was uh, Bert Lum's cohort um, on the uh, Bite Marks Cafe radio show, which succeeded the Think Tech radio show on HPR. And uh, there was something I saw recently on Civil Beat about Ryan, who was a geek, uh, was involved in a group that's developing an app here in Hawaii, mm -hmm. an app that would mm, uh, help uh, identify patients, help identify you know, people who you should trace with. It was a tracing, it is a tracing app. We could really make history if we could develop something like that. That would be accepted by the public. And I don't, I don't know why we don't have that already. This is supposed to be a big software country. Um, and yet uh, I haven't heard of any software, have you, uh, that does tracing? Has anybody heard of any software? That Actually, there was something in the beginning. I do recall, darn it, I'm, I'm trying to pull back what, whose was it? But they were able to count people in the area of having uh, temperatures, I think. something. There was something really interesting in the beginning that looked promising. And then it, it just disappeared. And I've not ever heard anything since. Yeah, so, you, you know, if you, you go to, uh, go to the POB for a routine medical appointment, and a few people are out there with a little bridge table and, and they got a thermometer, electronic thermometer, and they take your temperature. That's meaningless. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> most of this virus is shed by asymptomatic people. Mm -hmm. when, when are we gonna figure it out? The five minute test could really change things. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think that Trump is inclined to do that because we have seen in so many ways that he's trying to prevent tests. He said that in Tulsa, and he has said it ever since. Uh, at first, he said, no, I was only joking, but we know now that he wasn't joking and is not joking, and he wants to suppress the number. You know, remember, for example, um, that he said, from now on, the CDC is not going to collect data. It's going to be uh, Health and Human Services, which is a complete failure. You know why? Because nobody wants to give Health and Human Services the numbers. Mm -hmm. So we don't have the numbers that CDC was collecting when it was credible. This whole you know, house of cards is like falling apart. The federal numbers are not reliable, uh, but there's one thing clear and that is where uh, over five and a half million and that there's now 180,000 deaths. Uh, so where, where are we going on this? I mean, uh, here's a hard question for you, Tim. What's the relationship of all of this with the election? Remember that people are afraid to go vote at the polls because of COVID. What effect is this having on, on, the, on the, the feeling people have about voting? Well, great question, Jay, because that correlates directly to Donald Trump's fear about mail-in ballots. And he knows that people are fearful to go stand in line uh, they are they are concerned about that. So their their inclination is to say, give me a mail-in ballot. And of course, he needs and wants to stop that. And as we know by his appointment of um, Louis DeJoy, the postmaster, they have done just that. They have slowed down the mail, um, lay, maybe a little too prematurely, uh, because you know the cat's out of the bag and we're doing something about it. Uh, Congress is doing something about it. Uh, so that's a great question, Jay. And I think I just want to tag on to something and all three of you have been saying, and that is the word credibility. And the more Donald Trump erodes the credibility of the FDA through the, uh, you know, the, uh, the plasma theory and miracle cure, and then rolling back CDC's uh, position on when you should get tested if you've been exposed to a COVID-19 patient, that credibility has been damaged. Now, let's, let's kind of move down in the future here to say, okay, now there's a vaccine that the CDC and the FDA is saying, we highly recommend people get this vaccine immediately. Well, with damage credibility to those agencies, you know, personally, I'm gonna be a little bit uh, hesitant to uh, just jump on the bandwagon and say, yeah, give me that vaccine. I don't know, you know, I don't know the efficiency of it. I don't know the safety of it now because I'm not sure I trust these two agencies any further. And I think that is gonna be a huge, huge uh, hurdle in the future to, to overcome. 
Yeah, I mean, everything he does undermines credibility and uh, hydroxychloroquine is an example of a goose chase. That's not going to have an if a positive effect on public health. It's a goose chase. And so uh, the effect it has is, you know, the thinking person does not believe him. But let me ask you this, uh, Winston, um, you know, what about that issue, the issue of coronavirus and what Donald Trump has done about it? He's, he, he minimized the risk. He said it's going to go away. He said it's a sniffle. He says 99% of the, of the cases uh, are, you know, don't hurt anybody. And on and on. I mean, you, we could spend the rest of the show on that, about how he diminished the, the, the threat of it. Um, and, th and then he did all these things to confuse people and, um, you know, goose chase things. So is this reaching the public? Is this a factor in decision process for the American public in November? Those who do go and vote or, um, you know, vote by mail, however they vote, um, or, is it, or, is, or, is, or do a fair number of people just blow it off? Do they believe his commercials when he says, and he says it over and over again, and Pence says it over and over again, and they said it over and over again at the convention here, you know, that Donald Trump had done a wonderful job on dealing with COVID, uh, where do people come out on it? They believe it. You know what? If 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 he says it, it's it's true for half the nation, and that is just the reality we got to live with. So hopefully there'll be some people uh, that are able to get a message across. I don't know how it's going to happen, but like Tim said, when that when the FDA says here, take this vaccine, you probably got. I, I read something astounding, like twenty five or thirty percent of the population thinks that it's it's connected with um, an alien 5G takeover by Apple that's going to switch your brain and make you a, a zombie. I, I, it's it's an insane amount of people for those types of conspiracy theories. But you know what? When you already have distrust in things, are, do you want to be the guinea pig? It's like I said, I'm waiting for what the Germans come out with. What do the Germans have to say? The Norwegians, the Danes. Um, the Swiss, the French, and let's go from there, the, uh, the Japanese, and let's see what, uh, what information we get. This whole virus has to be mass crowdsourced from different countries, companies, cities, the whole nine yards, as we see different ways to respond to it, what works, what doesn't. We've got a lot of really good examples of what doesn't work, and we have some good examples of what does work. But you look at New Zealand, you know, immediately locked down, look at Melbourne. They locked down when they had, you know, there we and here even in Honolulu, the mayor saying, "We're locking down again. We don't have a choice. If we're at eleven percent. We, he is right. We could be the new New York here, and we're at ninety percent capacity at Queens right now. By the way, not in ICU beds, but just overall capacity. Yeah, no, no surprise there. So you know, um, there there are people, including members of the scientific medical research community, uh, that say, you know, there's not enough collaboration going on around the world. That our isolationist policies, um, <clears throat> you know, and and um, you know the government's and Trump's um, statements have really have really had a negative effect on global uh, cooperation and collaboration on these things, um, and, and it's, it's very sad. What's worse is that uh, Trump had has a an influence on on leaders, especially tyrannical ones around the world, who who don't want to wear masks who don't make rules about wearing masks, who don't care about social distancing, and they're having a terrible time. And to wit, Brazil. Brazil, the perfect example. Brazil is second only to us, and Brazil is much smaller. Um, it, it's, it's outrageous. But, but Stephanie, I mean, uh, to, to go with Winston's point, um, don't we need to have global cooperation and collaboration on the research? And are we getting that? Will we get that? How can we get that? Will Biden do it? Oh, yes. I, I mean, I'm sure Biden will do it. And just because he's been, um, de he's demonstrated that he can take advice from people who lead him and advised him previously. And I think that we have advice from international, but I don't think anybody's bothering anymore because let's face it, what's the most important data point, okay? I mean, really the thing that's driving, getting the sources and supplies and, 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 and the way to be, um, you know, held up to be able to do it is, is of course, how many people are going to be in the ICU. So if we start with these numbers you, you all were talking about earlier, um, 
we we say 10% or so and a million people up or so here and we've got 100,000 people that are 10% of a positive test result, okay? So of those 100,000 people, how many are going to the ICU? How many are gonna get over it in a couple of days? How many are asymptomatic and how many are gonna be able to manage this at home? How, so how many have to actually be Support, support it medically. And as you know, Tripler, Queens has already asked Tripler and evidently Tripler is going to be able to, which I was surprised to hear that maybe they can take, they can get federal permission to take the, the burden off of Queens who's over its ICU or close to it. So they're supposed to be receiving. So, I mean, I think that we're looking and the international folks have looked at what is our issue here. We've got in New York, it was the overrunning of the medical system. So it's a matter of knowing that that percentage of positive tests, which we haven't known, which is the reason to test more, which is why the Surgeon General was here. In spite of whatever Trump says, the Surgeon General was right on with everything he said. So we've got what? 70,000 tests to do within these two weeks. And he kind of was hooping us on to compete with uh, the other states who are kind of yellow or red to get as many tests done as possible because 70,000 tests in two weeks will be another record. And so if we're setting a record for positive test results, now we need to set that record for how many tests. And I just want to get the most tests done, like 70,000 within two weeks is like some huge number every day. So people are working really, really hard. But one of the things I just wanted to share with you on, you may have heard it, which has satisfied me because I've always been so bothered about uh, President Trump saying more tests, more cases. And it was finally Joy Reid who said, now, if we don't give pregnancy tests, does that make the rate of pregnancy go down? So if nobody gets a pregnancy test, is that a way of controlling our population? She's great. <laughs> And I said, oh, thank you so much. Okay, we need, we need a, we, we're getting to the end of our time. We need some predictions. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the problem is that Trump is in a bit of a pickle because he wants to, you know, keep the number of tests down. He wants to keep the number of cases down. Um, but the, the dilemma is that they go up anyway. Um, and he's trying to be the president who said that he solved the problem. Uh, what's he going to do going forward? There's a tension there. I mean, it's an internal conflict in his position. I don't want to know about the cases, but I want to show that I've done a great job um, with all the therapeutics and the vaccines and the testing. And even though he hasn't done jack about this, um, what, what's he going to do as we get closer to the election? Which way is he going to go? Is he going to attack the pharmaceutical companies? Is he going to attack the CDC and the and the FDA and the C and, and the NIH? Um, can you predict? Can you help me understand which way he is likely to go uh, as we well, get closer to the election? Yeah, I I don't know if it's a matter of prediction, um, Jay. I I think we're seeing his strategy play out right now, and that is, I'll repeat and say the same thing over and over again. I'll then have my loyal network, uh, Trump News, excuse me, uh, um, <laughs> Fox News. I will have them repeat it a thousand times. I'll have all my surrogates repeat it as many times as possible. I'll get the CDC and the FDA to knuckle under and say, what a great job I've done. And by the time the election happens, the American public has heard this over and over again, these lies, but they accept it as truth now because they've been brainwashed. And I think it's not a prediction. I think we're seeing that play out right now um, in front of all Americans. And I think it's the ones that are savvy enough to say, you're lying. You're bold faced lying to us. And we're mm -hmm. not gonna accept, no matter how many times you repeat what a great job you've done on COVID-19, you haven't, you failed. Well, is the press doing a decent job on this, Winston? I mean, I, I do watch uh, MSNBC and I do watch CNN. And to some extent I watch the PBS NewsHour, but I don't, I don't feel they're really making the point that Tim is talking about. Uh, what have they been doing? Why haven't they been addressing the lies head on? Uh, why haven't they been you know, examining his, his strategy on this? 
Um, and what should they do now? It's a great question, but you know, you're either you're watching Fox News or you're not. You're in one camp or you're in the other. So there's there's only that that slim percentage in between that uh, that hasn't really made up its mind or thinks, well, he lies a little bit or I don't like him bullying, but you know, he's he's got this done or he's got that done because they're believing half the lies or three fourths of the lies. So I don't know. I the, the, the media is going to do what sells ads. And so they may not, it may not be in their best interest to delve into any of these things. If you want the news in this country or anywhere, you got to go looking for it. Go to the Christian Science Monitor, go to Deutsche Welle, uh, you know, go find some, uh, some in-depth reporting, the Atlantic, uh, you know, the New York uh, uh, magazine, but wherever it is, search for the information yourself, come up with your own informed decisions as best as you can. Certainly the media is, has a vital role to play in this. Um, it's just Absolutely. Our thing to step up and fill those shoes. So uh, Stephanie, um, I, I wanna know how you feel about this. Are, are you less concerned, more concerned or equally concerned as you were say a month ago? Uh, we learn, especially we in this discussion learn about what's going on. Um, we learn about uh, the confusion out there and the misinformation, disinformation. Um, are you worried about your own safety, more or very, less? Very worried, very worried. And I'm looking forward to Kamala Harris's speech today, which is supposed to address some of, I, I assume, will address some of these things. I haven't read too much about it. And then I think we're going to have to sneak around more and do more. In other words, something like bumper stickers, okay? Like new birth control, don't take the pre pregnancy test. I mean, we need some work here. Um, to get this word out to people in other ways. That well, I want to say, we, you know, we are, we are doing a certain amount of work. And Tim, you'll appreciate this a lot. Yesterday, we got on, on YouTube, uh, we got pr probably the most complimentary statement we, we have gotten in a long time. This fellow uh, made a comment and he said that, uh, uh, actually, I think it was Trump week, but it might have been, it might have been this show, um, coronavirus. He said, we are the enemy of the people. <laughs> that, was Trump week. that was Trump week. In addition to that is with um, the comment was, what lies are you referring to? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, the 20,000 maybe? I, I don't know. <laughs> and documented in the post. Documented. OK, yeah. we're out of time. Stephanie Dalton, uh, Tim Apicella, Winston Welsh, thank you so much for a great and very informative discussion. Aloha. Aloha. Uh -huh.